<laughs> Yay! Haster, Haster, Haster! <laughs> Hi there, this is Cole, here with more Hexcrank Live, continuing with The Last Door Season 1. It is my hope to finish this game tonight. I have two more episodes to go. Alright, so, let's continue. Even after all these years, I have not forgotten your voice. You are the fourth witness. I remember. I remember now what happened. What is it that we saw? The eye of the bird, Malum and Say, evil itself. What happened to us? What is, that, what is it that we witnessed? You must tell me. You must make me understand why my mind cannot fathom. It was our curiosity that damned us. We opened that which should not be opened. In doing so, we shore in the veil that separated our world from his. In seeking vision, we were ourselves seen by the eye of the bird. It remembers us. It looks for us. It calls us from its dark nest, from its abominable lair. All these years, I have attempted to return to it, but I have no strength left. These poor wretched creatures are too fragile. They lack the sight to return. Not one of them has. Only us, the four witnesses. Oh, so he's sending people through the veil. Who are the other two? Where are they? They disappeared as you did. I haven't heard from any of you, but I was seized by curiosity. It absconded with my faith and deprived me of sanity. Oh Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. Nothing remains. All that is left is surrender, surrender to him. Gravely we have sinned and now our only absolution is to burn, burn in the flames. the groundskeeper came and all right he's burying me alive there we go come in <laughs> oh, wait, huh? Well, we have seen... We've seen the end of the previous chapter, for people who were not here last time. After the death of his old friend Anthony, Devitt decides to travel back to the school that they had both attended in the outskirts of Aberdeen. In his search, De uh, Devitt meets his old teacher, Father Ernst. Uh, he also remembers the experiment they all attempted many years back, which had terrible consequences. Then the truth is revealed. Father Ernest worships the eye of the bird, a vision resulting from the experiment. He killed many people trying to replicate his results. Those who saw the eye back then, he calls the four witnesses. When discovered, Ernest immolates himself. Finally, Ernest's servant knocks DeVitt out and buries him alive. All is darkness. Hey there, JMH. Hi, robot. Hi, Andrew. I'm buried alive and dying. All is cold. Huh? 
silent at all, actually. <laughs> Where's all the dirt? I thought I was buried. Okay, this was like a flashback. Jeremiah, we must talk. With your mother deceased, arrangements have, have to be made regarding your upbringing. A man of my position and responsibility can't take the time to look after a young boy. First thing in the morning, you will depart for Scotland. I am sending you to study at the St. Gall Boarding School in Aberdeen. You need not bother to write, as I will not have time to read your letters. When the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Still no letters for you, Devit. Please do not persist any further. Pleased to meet you, my new classmates. And who is that? Him? Oh, that's just a bit. Pay him no mind. He's a little odd. Interesting. Hello, I'm Anthony. Anthony Beechworth. This is my first term here. I've only just arrived. I hope we can be friends. Okay, so how, how did I end up down here? What is that? What is that ticket? <laughs> I'm here to see a play called The Four Witnesses. My head is pounding. I feel so weak and thirsty. If I don't drink water soon, I will faint. Dear Lord, where am I? I'm in a city? Is it Aberdeen? How could I have, how could I have escaped? <laughs> Ooh, watercress. Yum. Young man, could you please tell me where I am?
Hi there, the Zone Heroes and Zombie Chocobo. There's a cart blocking the alley. I won't be able to pass until it is moved. There's an indigent in ragged clothing. He sits leaning against the brickwork. Oh, the horse meat <laughs> dealer is above giving me some water. Oh, it's fresh horse meat, though. There's a man staring at me from amidst the crowd. Something in his countenance seems strange to me. Let's go see what they're up to. Oh, huh. Maybe she knows something. Please, ma'am, could you tell me where I am? You don't know where you're at? Why, this is the old Nickel Street Rookery. A darker, more decrepit place like never there was. But that's in London. How could I have arrived in this slum? I'm sparing you the accent. Um, let's see. Oh, let's drink some gutter water. Yay! It's about the soot, though. Need a life straw. The zone heroes ask well, what is up. Currently, I am playing The Last Door. Had a busy day full of email and spreadsheets and little breaks to play the Mega Man X collection. And a little bit of Nier Automata. The Mega Man X collection is very good. And I like Nier Automata quite a bit as well. Okay, so I've slaked my thirst with grimy soot water. <laughs> okay, oops. Hey, I still have my ticket. I must have fainted. It is dangerous to be an old nickel at night. Uh, I should make my way out as quickly as possible. Oh. Hi and bye, Kevy. Thank you for the bits. Oh wait, the cart's gone. Air Doctor Wakefield is here to see you, mine air. Show him in, Hertz. It is about your patient, is it not? There is no trace of him. He hasn't shown up for his last few sessions. I've been to his house, of course. His landlady assured me he went on a trip weeks ago and hasn't come back home. He kept the destination to himself. Then it is happening as I feared. What do you mean? I'm sorry, my dear friend. I first thought of this uh, when you described your sessions with Air DeVitt, but I didn't want to upset you without need as I hoped for the best. Now I'm afraid my suspicions could be true. There are some things that I will have to verify first, though. I promise that I will contact you as soon as I have learned anything important. Please, Air Doctor, it is of utmost importance no one else knows of this matter. You have my total discretion. Huh, so my my shrink is breaking, uh, breaking confidentiality. Limey bastard. I feel like I have been walking these streets for hours. Surely I must be close to finding my way out of this labyrinth. Oh yay, adventure game maze. Sign me up. Um, okay, there's a handprint on that glass.
Aw, thank you, Casca. Hmm. Casca said a very nice thing about me in the chat. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see. You may keep my miserable kingdom. You may keep my spike-encrusted jewels. Stay there as you will and stare into my eyes. I am a shadow's shadow and will not disappoint. Huh. Let's see if it's in the sewer. Um, the Zone Heroes ask me, um, how often does a survival horror game get under your skin and genuinely freak you out? Um, honestly, not as much as I would like anymore. Um, my appreciation of them is very much on a kind of intellectualized level, which isn't to say I'm particularly smart at, like, observing them or playing them, but just, you know, I don't feel it very viscerally a lot. Um, exceptions recently have been the Outlast series. Uh, listen to either uh, the episode on Outlast 2 or, the, or watch the playthroughs of Outlast 2 that I recently did to hear me get real freaked out by it. Um, or uh, there's a moment in the Outlast whistleblower uh, episode, I think episode 2, where a particular scene made me cough up a bunch of bile into a trash can by my desk. Do you hear them? It's the crows, searching for the moans of the weak and dying. They're calling to each other. They must have found something. These streets are so confusing to navigate, I'm afraid I've lost my way. Could you direct me out? Yes, lost one. I can give you direction. I've been gifted with the second sight. I can peer deep into your past and unwind the tapestry of your fate. Would you like me to close my eyes so that yours may be opened? I haven't a penny to pay you. Money of this is of no matter here. Come close to me now. Huh, okay. <laughs> and Andrew is expressing disbelief that I spit up bile. Um, I don't know if it was just bile, that's just what I call it, like when you get a little bubble up, you know? No real solid stomach grossness. Okay, let's hear the dying star. You lost your guide. You follow the stream, but you do not know where it goes. You think you have escaped, but actually you are getting closer and closer. The walker, the walking dude. You have embarked upon a great journey, but this path has been walked by you before. You step in your own footprints inside a circle of fire. The mask. Empty eyes stare at you, and a voiceless mouth calls you. Somebody stop me. Its lips twist and snarl with what, with what it has seen, what is still to be seen. You think it is a stranger's face, but it is your own. What does this mean? I can't unpack these ones. The threads you have woven in destiny are too tight, child. But you will. Oh, yes. You will. It is not for me to say, but for you to discover. Remember that in the fog, we see only what is closest to us. The bird remains in the distance. If you wish to leave, you must follow the path of the bird. No more direction can I give. I'm following a man. He must have passed this way. And how is that man? Tall, well-dressed, red-haired, and a cold look in his eyes. 
the nightmare of which we don't talk about. All of us, asleep or awake, have seen that man at some time. Okay, so I need to find a map, I guess. Might as well follow this guy. <laughs> now you decide to be afraid of the dark? Locker. Okay. How should I do this? The remains of a horse hang by a hook affixed to the wall, its blood drains seeping into the floorboards. Okay, empty bottle. We're getting somewhere. Okay, a, gla a glass essentiae. Liquids are poured into the top and then impurities removed through the valve at the bottom. So like a, like a filter. I wonder if I can filter out some of that water um, from before. Some of that rancid gross water that made me pass out. How do I get out? <laughs> what in the world? Why can't I leave? Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, let's go get some of that water. Wait, how do we get back out? Huh.
Hmm. Okay, so that church is where the red-haired man is. I keep on... Why do I keep clicking on the wrong thing? Okay, there is no way to exit the fog. We can only wander around and get lost in it. In the fog, all the stars die. Maybe I can, let's see, can I use the, get some sewer water. Huh, maybe, maybe that uh, device will <laughs> filter this down to actual oil. I can use that to create like a lamp. Okay, I think maybe I need another vessel. Hmm, what am I missing? Uh, Andrew asks if Lone Survivor has been on Hexcrank Live. Uh, yes, either I think like maybe a year ago, two years ago, something like that, before I took a break. Um, however, I think I lost the recordings of that. I think, uh, I think it fell off the back of Twitch before I exported it. Um, so yeah. Wait, maybe if I walk left? Hmm. There has to be a pixel that I haven't hunted down just yet. You would think with the pixels being so big, this would be a little bit easier. Now, what is that? Oh, I can take it. Good. There we go. It's all falling into place now. OK, 
Okay, unless I need a specific thing to light that up. I think I can go to the church now. I did just see some fire, though. Lit. There's a pair of gloves, scuffed and stained, but they have character. It's a bottle of Saint Emilion Grand Cru. Recently chopped down tree. Ooh, a crypt. What was that that I missed there? I have no idea where I am or why I'm here. I should be at the bottom of a shallow grave. Now my eyes focus in the gloom. I can see that the person sitting in the bed is an elderly woman. She's just dressed. Dressed up as a young girl for some reason? She appears not to hear me or see me from here. I will need to get closer if I am to explain myself. March 8th, 1843. I'm exhausted. Father made me rehearse today for eight hours. By the end, the music wavered with his trembling hands. It's still a long time for the day of the show, but he insisted that everything must be perfect. One more song, he said, over and over. March 21st. Father got really mad at me, and he started to shout when, after many hours of rehearsal, I said that I wanted to get out and play a little bit in the street. More and more, he is obsessed with rehearsing, with concerts, with perfection. April 3rd. Am I not the one who earns the money to feed us? Am I not the one people come from all over to see and admire? Is my name not the one printed on all the posters? My name. The dolls for sale at, at the theater entrance, they have my likeness, my dress, and my beautiful hair. I should be the one who makes the decisions. April 21st. One more song. Yes, one more. A last song for Papa. No, I don't want to dance and sing anymore. It's enough for today. I want my lemonade. I want to play. Actually, madam, I'm afraid we've never met you before. I, I don't know who you are. Ah, you don't, you don't recognize me? Oh, it's baby Jane. Hi. Um, of course. 
Oh, I was afraid that you wouldn't recognize me. You must have seen the posters of my performances. They're simply everywhere and quite wonderful. You must have seen them. Don't you think they're beautiful? I want to get out of this place. Hide and seek. Oh, I do love games. I go to the fog when I want to get away. Daddy won't find me there, you see. In the fog, there are no faces. I'm looking for a gentleman. He's well-dressed with red hair. Do you know him? He, he led me to this place. No, father. I've been practicing the latest repertoire as you ordered. I've behaved very well today, haven't I? Let's play. Never a scarier two words. Now stand next to the fireplace and count to three. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? What the blazes just happened? My head, it's its pounding, and where did she go? Oh, my friend, she was never there. Oh, there's a mask here, huh? Oh, that's her diary. No, oh, that was spooky. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go up to the attic just yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who is this? No, no, no. Did I not pray enough? Have I not written faithfully every last note you screwed into me? Middle C up to A. Measure. G up to C. Tied. F. Second violin. Bar two. Middle C up to A. Double note. E, G, C. No! This was supposed to be our masterpiece. Viola, C, up an octave, and then up to G. What? What? Who do you think you are? Are you blind, man? Can't you see that I am creating the angel's voice? The work! C to A. An octave higher. A fragile voice flutters around the strophe. No. No, 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 no. Hands swallow you, laugh at you. I lost it again. My inspiration, too, is lost, quite lost. In the fog, the notes moan just her. Who was she? Oh, beautiful Daphne. The best soloist that a composer could have. The voice of an angel. What made my music possible. She would stand there by the window. The wind caressed her cheeks. It danced in her golden hair. Her dress glowed like an ember in the dusk sun. What happened to her? She was very delicate. Like a flower in the desert, like a petal in the storm. The sickness, it just swept her away. Her voice, my God, her voice, it came from heaven. She was the angel of my music. The mausoleum outside the house, is, is that where Daphne is? Buried? That's right. I visited her many nights, and have even slept beside her on the cold, wet stone floor. I'm following a man... Though, come to think of it, maybe he's following me? He has a red beard and wears a cape. I feel very insulted by that. I sometimes find this man, too, among my notes. 
I feel him close to me at times. Please, I need to get out of this place. You ask me for words, but words are betrayers. They're dirty. Music. Just music remains beautiful, but it's a prisoner inside all of us. We must set it free. I can't help you now. Not until my work is finished. My work is the important thing. She was my only inspiration. I must go. Let music and singing surround you, my man. Okay, let's see what this weirdo has. Painting of a beautiful young lady with a peaceful expression. Like one of Raphael's angels. Huh. <laughs> the man is tortured. <laughs> Wooden planks are blocking the window. I can only see part of the outdoors. Some kind of a washroom? <laughs> <laughs> it's a porcelain doll with lifelike proportions. The face has been removed, leaving her featureless, but its wig shines brightly as though of human hair. Let's put the mask on this bad boy. <laughs> Oh, it's a it's a record, huh? <laughs> okay, let's go up the attic. looks like the lyrics to a song entitled The Last Song for You. The verses are scrawled so poorly as to make them illegible. Hmm. Why is there a human-sized cage? Okay. Well, a key seems useful. I forget, is there a door over here? Uh, maybe it's to the mausoleum. So the musician is distraught. He's broken because his muse is gone. 
The only apparent way forward is through the mausoleum. Maybe I can dress up or pretend to be the muse? Get him out of his funk? It's a tailor's mannequin, huh? Hi there, vigorous bog. Thank you for following. <laughs> Is he on to my game? Okay, so how does one repair a mask? There must be something I'm missing. One moment. Sorry about that. Uh, I was like phone call from my brother. That was time sensitive. Okay, so this is locked. This is what I imagined. Oh, there's a dress. Hi there, Equus. Welcome. Equus wants to know how it's going. Oh, it's going just fine. I have no idea what's going on in this video game, but that's okay. No, had a busy day today, and I'm... <laughs> yeah, it's just right. It looks more and more like the young woman in the painting. Had a busy day today, and I'm... Happy to unwind and play a game and drink a gin and tonic. Lantern quest. No, this is still the last door. So I need to repair this mask. What is that? The wine won't do anything with that. However... There's that sticky resin. Does that make any sense? I coated a feather. Okay, so I've stuck the pieces together with the resin from the freshly cut tree. The face reminds him of a girl from the paintings. Weird. All right, let's go freak out a loon. <laughs> Daphne, you're back. Are you a figment of my melancholic mind? Are you the ghost of my dying music? No, it doesn't matter because you are with me again and I know now exactly how to compose my masterpiece. Please, take my violin. Now that I have completed my work, I no longer have a use for it. It needs to be with her. Go to the mausoleum and place the violin where her heart lies. 
The angel of my music will guide you. Here, take the key to the mausoleum, my friend. Okay, in the fog we haven't eyes, but we count our ears. To find your way, you must search for the Simurg. Oh. Look for the Simurg. Oh, geez. What is the Simurg? It's what the crows are searching for. It is what you search for, too. Hmm, okay. Maybe the mausoleum will have some some answer as to what the Samurg is. Here lies an angel. Great pity must be felt for those who did not hear her. Pity for those not blessed by her naive grace, not shaken by her heavenly voice, trembling their souls into divine ascendance. Here lies Daphne. God rest her soul. Her body's gone. With the help of River, the naiad Daphne hid from sun in the shadowy mist. She changed her skin for strong bark so her heart was forever concealed, her dance frozen in the rustle of a thousand leaves. Who's Russell? Is this Russell? I beg your pardon, sir, if I have startled you. What are you doing here, sitting in the dark? Why, well, I'm reading these marvelous books. In the dark, but how can you see the words without any light? That is the only way to see them, really. That is, if you want to see the words on the other side of the page. The words from the shadows. Shadow always hides from the light, you know, so they can only be read in darkness. Are you the owner of this bookshop? Oh, goodness, no. The bookshop doesn't belong to anyone. Not since I found it here. I'm just a guest, an explorer of these ancient tomes. Have you seen a man pass this way? He is red-haired, tall, and wears a cape. Oh, yes, I know of whom you speak. I see him here from time to time perusing the books. He would pick one off the shelf, glance, on, glance at it, and then put it back. He and I never spoke, though. Why do you ask? I see him sometimes, but he slips away whenever I try to meet him. I feel as if he is guiding me towards something. 
That may be so. We each have our own white rabbit to lead us through lost places. Can you tell me which books this man pursued, perused? Let me think. Ah, uh, yes. I recall him looking at... Hmm. Excuse me? I recall him looking at Unexplored Places of the Empire. An excellent tome, very revealing and very rare. This book is this bookshop is very fortunate to have a copy in its collection. I'm not sure where it is now, but I'm sure it can't be far. Would you know the importance or meaning of Simurg? Simurg, Simurg, ah, ah yes, the Bird King. There's a book of ancient poetry here that makes mention of him. I'm sure you can find it here somewhere. Pardon the interruption, sir. I'll leave you to your reading. Your creepy shadow reading. I hear a woman's voice in the distance. It sounds as if she's singing a lullaby. The book lies on the floor. Its spine reads, Unexplored Places of the Empire. A page has been marked. Okay, whoops. <laughs> the Place of Eternal Fog. Also known as Zai La. It is a unique uh, bay in the east of Balishwar, near the jungles of Bengala. It is surrounded by tall, snow-capped mountains. Usually covered in mist, the waters of the bay are very dangerous and rarely visited. Huh. dead tree in the middle of the building. On the ground lies a book entitled The Songs of Zai La. The page to which it was opened has been torn out, but the remaining fragment identifies the title. The Search for Simurg. What was that up there? Maybe if I burn the tree down? I mustn't fall asleep. I hear them crawling. I hear them gnawing. Rats. Too many of them. They know I'm here. I mustn't fall asleep. They stalk me, coming closer and closer. I can see their blood-red eyes glimmering in the darkness. I must not fall asleep. The space doesn't make any sense. Now it's back the way I came. Wait, they said something about Daphne's body being encased in bark. 
There has to be something I missed. That tree had a crack in it, maybe. Do I have to examine the crack? He told me to place it where her heart lies. Is it reincorporating the wood of the violin? Weird, maybe the violin made the tree come back to life. The graffiti says, do not fall asleep. Oh, I already examined the paper on the floor. Okay, this is the, um... Did I? Now I'm second-guessing myself. Is there paper on the floor that I am not seeing, Eccles? Mm, I think this may be the piece of paper that I already examined. Yes, okay, the note about the rats. I should have been confident. It might just be easier to circle back around this way. Uh, maybe she knows more about this. Nope. Oh, wait. Okay, so this must be where the... The growth of the tree brought it all the way out here. First into the wind they sought for the king, but lost were the birds. They wept in suffering and flew to the sea compelled by a need. They found their silence. Their quest was complete. Ah. <laughs> I think I got an answer right in L.A. Noir. Okay, winds, birds, sea, silence. Okay, so as I walk, you can hear the sounds changing depending on where you stand. Wind, birds, sea, silence. That sounds like wind. That's waves. Oh wait, shit. Huh, okay. Let's try this again. It's ocean. B 
bugs. Okay, here's wind. Now, birds. Okay, now silence. This might be it. Your ticket, please. Thank you. Please come in. How am I gonna see that day? The four witnesses. Hello, Jeremiah. I knew you would find us eventually. Welcome to our humble performance. Sorry, I had to write something down. You were there. You were a part of the group? You don't remember me, do you? I am Alexandra. What is all this about? What do you want from me? From you? Nothing, dear Jeremiah. It is you who came here, searching for answers. It is the same as when you joined our group. We each came with our own reasons. Do you remember yours? True philosophy. Indeed, it was our thirst for knowledge that drew us together. No one waits for us out there, dear Jeremiah. There is no one who will care for us when our hour comes. We had been alone until now. How did I end up in London after being buried in the boarding school? The bird protects us. It is by his design that we should meet again. But we are not the only ones who take shelter beneath his wings. His influence and power is ever-expanding, ever-reaching. Do you not feel him beckoning? I only want to wake from this nightmare. There is no nightmare. It is a show, a performance. The truth we seek lies beyond the curtain. Now we have crossed the point of no return. The lights are on, the stage is set, and soon you shall meet the actors. Welcome. <laughs> Yay! Haster, Haster, Haster! No mask? No mask? This belongs to you. Dearest Air Dr. Wakefield, If you are reading this, then you have followed my instructions to arrive 
at the agreed-upon address. Good. I apologize that I could not accompany you immediately. My own investigations have demanded a certain unanticipated degree of attention. I have determined that your patient, DeVitt, is in serious trouble. I will contact you with more information post-haste. In the meantime, discretion is of the utmost importance. Your friend, Johan Kaufman. Well, that's a big spike in backers. Neat. Good for them. Previously on the last door. After escaping from his burial, DeVitt finds himself in a cellar of London's darkest slum, the old Nickel Rookery. In his pocket, he has a ticket for a show called The Four Witnesses. Oops, I skipped it. Um, there is no turning back. <laughs> Oops. Well, you guys were all here for this. A lot of you were. Who is this? I have made my mind. This is that person tied to that chair? Go on, do it. Do it! Do it! way into Silp Novak's name. Okay, this is episode four. Can you see all these stars twinkling in the black outer abyss? All the constellations traced by human eyes in long distant eras? Look now to the forest in the valley, to the old tower, from the last tree in the distance to the stars in the sky, and even the stones beneath our feet are just silhouettes that hide the truth from our poor senses. Ancient shadows that hang over the veil that hides the world. As if there were, as if it were the curtain of a theater, the veil separates the truth from the lie. Cool, cool, cool. The veil is a place, Devitt, a place of miss. My phone is ringing. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, coordinating something with my brother. The veil is a place, Devitt, a place of miss. Anthony's great ability has brought you here, but his influence will soon fade away. The mask of lies will descend over your eyes once again. Oh, yeah, this is good. You must find the door, as I did. The door that gives passage through the veil. Open it and we will walk together beyond the mist. So she's the last of the remaining witnesses and she's, she's in the veil or beyond it. I suppose you're wondering why I called you so urgently? I cannot deny it, your letter was truly mysterious. I've been traveling, Doctor, to Scotland, 
Have you heard about the massacre of St. Gall? Why, yes, the tragic event has been the continued object of speculation and grim rumor in every newspaper in England. For weeks now, pamphlets have claimed that all kinds of macabre things took place. But I don't understand. How, how is all this connected with my patient? He was there. I'm, a, I'm afraid he's one of the victims. Dear God! Are you telling me that my patient's been murdered? Mur murdered? Thankfully, no. P please excuse me for alarming you. I, I did not mean to give this impression. Herod of it was attacked, but he survived. What happened to him then? It seems the criminal was caught by Air David in the midst of the act. Then he tried... tried to do the same thing to David that he had done to the others. I guess he's talking about, about Baldwin, the groundskeeper, maybe? Fortunately, the nuns arrived in time to unearth him from the coffin. Air David was hospitalized, huh, so I wasn't in London at all. The nurses report that he remained unconscious for the entire day. What was David doing there? Many years ago, the St. Gall Hospital was a boarding school. It appears that both your patient and Mr. Beechworth spent a part of their youth together there. We can assume that Air David was investigating something. He believed he had found a clue related to his friend's death. What was the cause of those awful deaths? No one knows for sure. The victims were inflicted with terrible wounds. All of them had an expression of utmost terror on their faces. I suspect you did not find Mr. David in the hospital. Indeed, he was already gone by the time I arrived. I have not been able to determine his whereabouts since. I see. What conclusions do you draw from all these circumstances? I have some theories, but I would prefer not to reveal them until events have unfolded. In all of them, there is a fundamental element whose role has not yet been revealed. And what leads you to this conclusion? It is something that the Holy Sisters found beside Air de Witt, within the coffin. An empty hypodermic needle with traces of an unknown substance. Double. Episode number four, Ancient Shadows. I'm sure this is the place. Alexandra's house must be just ahead. One moment, I really need to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Ragweed season starting up. The ancient castle of Pevensey rests in the distance. It was a garrison built by the Romans, but was abandoned and has been in ruin ever since. Thank you for the blazu, Andrew. Huh. <laughs> Maybe it should give you some pause that the door was latched from the outside. Well, what are they trying to keep in? Dog? <laughs> no one is answering. Perhaps I should go inside anyway. I'll just tell the household that I'm an old friend to come to visit. Almost Moonlight Sonata. A strange woman stares down at me, glaring with a silent reproach at my intrusion. Footsteps. Must be someone upstairs. I really want to see what's on the other side of that gate, though.
it's too dark. Okay, back inside. Let's see here, anything in the sitting room? Isn't that a kettle? It's an oil lamp. That will be useful. Hmm. Okay, not gonna go into the cellar just yet. for the cellar. Uh, I have a lamp though so I can see what's in this. It looks like a maybe a greenhouse. What's that bottle? It's a jar of vitriol oil. Huh. Okay, back into the house. Nothing more for me in the kitchen. <laughs> Alexandre. Let's maybe read what's on this slip of paper. His words will be a window into his madness. The veil is something we sense in our innermost being incessantly. In vain do we waste our lives craving to tear through. It is Za Ilithal, the curtain behind which the great wings beat. Inside its ancient mist inhabit the shadow, the shadows of those who left. All right, let's uh, let's examine this clock. No, oh, it's missing a bird. Huh. <laughs> Alexandre, it's me, Devitt. I'm sorry if I startled you. Is everything all right? Why are you sitting in a wheelchair? Are you hurt? Maybe? Can you stand? He's staring blankly at some distant point, as if he has not heard my question at all. You told me I should come here, and I come I came as soon as I could. Can you tell me what's happening here? He gives no answer, but persistently stares at something nearby. He appears to be in some kind of hypnotic trance. When I was downstairs I could have sworn I heard footsteps. Were they yours, or is there someone else in the house? For a moment I felt a flash of hope that he was looking at me, but he is unresponsive. Alexandre, please say something. I, I don't know what to do. I don't understand just what happened to him. One moment, I need to blow my nose.
Okay, I'm back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a hook and a rope. Oh my god, is this a grappling hook game? August 5th, 1887. I can't work in the basement anymore. Those wretched sculptures, I feel them stalking me in the, di in the darkness. I know it's not possible, but I can hear the crunches, the flapping wings, stones grinding on stone. Their frozen paroxysms with what diabolical art were those gestures conceived? An eternal movement, a tension, an impossible struggle to get back to the life they never had. I might place them outdoors, in the greenhouse, and let the mold devour them and wasps make their nests in their hollow hearts. Yada, yada, yada. I need to make a grappling hook. So I'm going to do that right now. Ah. That soothes the fire. It had been a minute. Okay. Some kind of... Some kind of green room? Not green room. Dark room. Pictures are hanging from a cord. They look as, as if they were improperly developed. You can hardly distinguish anything. It looks like some kind of red tinted glass cover used to mask the, mask the lamp is completely shattered on the floor. Huh. A lamp is hanging from the ceiling. Its bulb casts an intense white light. Okay, so I guess maybe that has ruined the... Uh, Ruined the photos. Okay, so jar of cyanide. We have vitriol here as well. We're wearing rat masks. JMH says, I guess Alexandre is Miko lashing, mind in the veil as their body wastes away in the mortal world. That is my guess too. Um, it is a big book of chemistry recipes. A few pages have been bookmarked, and some of the articles are underlined. Okay, uh, 3149, collodion for photography. Collodion is a vehicle by which the photographic chemicals are united upon the surface of the glass and the sensitive coating produced. Many formulae are, pro are published for this article, to which great value is attached. Some supposing that to its particular composition belong the principal cause of failure or success. This is only in degree true. Okay, to develop a positive image. This is done by pouring upon the slate, uh, upon the plate rather, about one ounce of vitriol. I better write this down. Although I doubt they're going to get that fiddly with it. it never hurts. Okay, one ounce vitriol. Um, and then adding five or six drops of cyanide. Uh, then the plate must be thoroughly washed in water to remove any of the excess of the chemicals. But I probably need some kind of red globe for the light, uh, the causes of failure. They would almost require a chapter by themselves. A long experience convinces us that nine out of every 10 failures occurs from a want of care, the presence of dirt, negligence. One cannot be over nice, careful, or cleanly. The best results always rewarding the most painstaking. If a mistake is made and the order specified in the formulae, quickly flow clean water over the plaque and start again. Huh, okay. But I definitely need to fix that light. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, there are other rooms than these. large envelope of black felt covered in dust and ashes. It is labeled with a, with a warning, do not open under white light. Huh. So. An invoice. May this document serve as a record of the payment made corresponding to the following work. The cuckoo clock mechanism has been modified to give the strokes exclusively at quarter past six in the afternoon. In addition, a special device and a switch have been added to synchronize all the clocks in the house. Huh. Okay, so I need to buy another clock then, maybe? Dear Alexandra, I have excellent news. A contact from the university has given me access to a 12th century alchemical tome containing an amazing formulary. There is no doubt that sometimes mere contemplation takes the mind to places that otherwise it would not have visited. Leafing through the grimoire and marveling at the exquisite illumination of its pages, I have been struck by a sudden epiphany, a radical but elegant method that I have decided to try. Forgive me for not providing any information about the method itself. As soon as I get definite results, I will write you immediately. I believe fortune has truly smiled upon us today. Videte ne quis sciat. Which is, if I remember correctly, no one can ever know. Tell no one, something like that. Hmm, okay. So I need to find a way to open this envelope without any white light around. Maybe there's a way I can turn that light bulb red, possibly. Let's see what I have at my disposal. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see if I can find uh, find a way to deploy this little grappling hook. It is burning a hole in my pocket. It really bugs me how close that song is to Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I thought maybe I could use the hook as some kind of leverage to lift open the... A man can dream. Oh. Oh, fuck. I just used that to get a... I just used to get a, to get a bucket from a well. Man... Within the mud and dirt inside the bucket, there was a small bird of brass. Oh, there's something inside. Oh wait, did I read this before? It's a diary, okay. October 12th, 
It's been a while since I can't devote any time to this diary for reasons beyond my control. An event most tragic has taken place in the house. Mr. Dupre has gotten ill, immersed in an everlasting stupor from which it seems he shall not return anytime soon. Since the accident, I patiently take care of him. The doctor's treatments don't seem to do any good. I feed him like a child and make sure that all of the sculptures in the house are turned toward the wall. What else can I do? October 13th. The, clock mo uh, the clockmaker just left. He had done such a good job. In the end, Mr. Dupre is not going to be able to notice the change in the clocks that he had so insistently requested. In his state, time will not be a problem anymore. Hi, Prince Robot. Feel happy that you missed the grappling hook disappointment. Huh. Okay, so I need a, I need a hand for that. And maybe just having taken the light bulb out will be enough for that dark room. Maybe that'll do just fine. Additionally, I mean, this envelope says not to open anything in it, or not to open it in white light, so I have to assume there are some negatives in there, maybe? Okay, so I've, I've pretty much looked at everything in here. Maybe there's something more outside, possibly. Nothing much going on in the overgrown greenhouse. Certainly nothing that will make my light bulb red. Or it sounds like some kind of ghastly euphemism. Maybe there's more I can see. Uh huh? Oh, it's a dead deer. Oh, it must be wolves about. Maybe, maybe I can bloody that bulb. Again, a ghastly euphemism. Alright, nothing to do there. Um, hi, Chris Noye. I think eventually I need to get the uh, get the bird in the cuckoo clock, but I uh, don't think I, I can't really do anything with the clocks until I have the uh, the hand or the yeah the the minute hand for the one downstairs. They're all synced up. I think I need to put the uh, bird and the clock upstairs, and then manipulate the one downstairs to make it match the right time. I think maybe that'll break the bird open. That is my current hypothesis.
Okay, it said put the vitriol on first. Wait, okay, so where's the plate then? Okay, so five or six of these drops. One. Oh, okay. Knew it wasn't going to be that fiddly. Okay, so it's a photograph of Anthony, my friend from the beginning of the game, and Alexandre. They've been they they've been meeting, huh? There's a shadowy figure in the back. <laughs> You belong in that painting. <laughs> Back in the frame, as it should be. Okay. Maybe I can show the picture to Alexandre. See what he has to say about that. Alexandre, do you recognize this photograph? Take a look. It is you and our old friend Anthony and there's someone else blurred in the background. Who is the third figure? Does he mean something to you? Oh, he talks. The bird awaits. The bird awaits. Okay, so let's try putting this here, maybe. Okay, um, so it's only supposed to open at 6.15. It's currently pointing at 11.15. If I'm doing that downstairs, that would mean that it would need to be at um, 3.30. So let's get downstairs and put it at 3.30. See if that, uh, see if that works it out. Wait, oh, yeah, there was a... Okay, so maybe 615 is the answer, and I'm just overthinking it. Hmm. Wait, maybe I've got it. I've got the rotation wrong. Twisted. Oh, Zaillithal. Okay, the bird has burst out at the stroke. Now its beak was open. Hey, bird key, yay. What's he saying? He's having some kind of seizure. He is trembling out of pure horror. Am I undoing his work? Am I exposing us to danger? got a I've got a key um, and I can open the cellar with that 
Cellars usually, usually, usually where fucked up stuff happens, so. book written in a language unknown to me. There is a scrawled annotation written in English in one of the margins. This and no other is the function of the serum we manufactured at the boarding school when we were young. It is something that we didn't understand at the time to accompany the mind to the proscenium of the big feeder and there help us to look behind the curtain that separates the world of men from the land of truth. To look I say, if anything, to apprehend an image of what lives there. Just that. Will the hoopo allow us to, ri to raise the curtain enough to walk? To walk off the stage and go beyond. Hoopo, what is that? Um, that's a bird. Colorful birds found across Afro-Eurasia with distinctive crowns. Okay. Oh, hey, a shovel. Good. I think I can dig up that, uh, dig up that grave. Uh, Prince Robot raises a good point that, uh, due to a current Steam sale, I believe that's still going on, that I need to look at and take advantage of, actually. Um, Pathologic is $1.30. Um, <laughs> it is a hard game to recommend, but it is also one of the best games and stories I've ever played. So, um, you know, discern that how you will. It is certainly worth a dollar thirty. Oh, am I taking up my own body? Huh, it's rusted. Maybe this acid will work on it? Good God. The remains of a humanoid body, but with a grotesque animal aspect. Maybe a small ape? It has a collar with some engraved words on it. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mikey finally shows his face around here. Uh, let's see what's in his hand. Clutching a rolled up canvas. Dear Alexandre, undoubtedly your methods are definitely stronger than mine. How did you manage to get results with such alacrity? On another note, my epiphany with the Treatise of Alchemy was not accidental. When examining the text closer, I have come to the conclusion that for a time, Raimundus Lully sought the same thing we did. 
In his account, he describes a formula that he calls Hupo. Yes, the legendary bird. It closely resembles the serum which we have worked so which we have worked so far, except for minor differences. It's a pity that you will tell me about old Mike. It's a pity what you tell me about old Mike. I hope he gets better soon. Videte Niki Scout. Huh, so his correspondent. They're working on a serum, trying to create something that will facilitate passage beyond the veil. Weird. Huh. Okay, so I've got the canvas. Hmm. Okay, so Deneb, Vega, and Altair. What is this? Steins Gate Zero? Um, and the, the Summer Triangle. Oh, Alexandre. Wait, why is that tea still warm if he's a vegetable upstairs? Where'd he go? Is he there, but collapsed? I missed it. Okay, October 31st, Halloween, 1891. I'm writing this in the light of my desk lamp, hoping to be able to remember it all when the birds finally sing and the sun's blessing dispels the dark shadows of the mind. During the whole afternoon, a strong wind hit the valley, so strong that it has cracked the larger branch of the old oak in the garden. I find it hard to get sleep during these nights, so I read a lot while accompanying the professor. I don't really know when exactly I fell asleep. I was awakened by the chill of the night, which was seeping through the open window. I looked outside and saw him. The professor was miraculously awake. What was my joy to see him standing on the balcony, watching the valley with a true serene expression, enjoying the fresh and calm air right after the storm. I felt that a blessing had fallen upon this house and for a moment, I felt immensely happy. I stared at him for a while without saying anything, being afraid of dispelling a vision I hadn't believed possible for a long time. And then in the midst of the silence, I heard a sound that froze me in my seat and snatched all my calmness with such a terrible chill that I will never forget. A loud noise beside me, low-pitched as the drag of a slab. Mr. Alexandre Snore, who was pleasantly sleeping in his bed. I've already made a decision. I'll leave this house. Huh. It's a lens. I don't have everything I need, but I have a lens. That should help. Yeah, Alexandra's just gone. Um, 
so there are three main things on that drawing. And there are three angels, I believe, over here. No, incorrect. No, oh, that's not a healthy sound. before there's a dark hole in the center of the room it delves into the depths of the earth far beyond what I can see oh it's like uh it's like uninvited snow it's weird a wooden secretary desk beautifully carved the flip top has a has no knob or lock just some strange symbols. Huh. Dear Alexandre, I'm terribly sorry about old Mike. Will you put him to rest in his favorite place? After weeks of unsuccessful attempts, I've managed to distill the alchemical formula based on the notes that you send me. Certainly you're a master of this craft. The subject reacted to the serum as usual, rapidly entering into a state of waking sleep. Sounds like what Alexandre is going through. Suddenly, the convulsion stopped. And since then, he has not been responding to any kind of stimulation. He has remained in this state for many days. My diagnosis is brain dead. Which should be our next step, Alexandre? I'm worried that this could be the end of our research. Videte ne scat. Hmm. Okay, so maybe I can use this crystal on the... Huh. Okay, so it seems to be pointing. Sorry, I'm replicating this on my graph paper. Because <laughs> I'm a dork. Maybe it will be useful. Okay, so maybe the big stars. Maybe I'm supposed to highlight the big stars? Maybe I'm supposed to buy a big star album? 
I already own them all, though. Oh, wait, shit. Let me jot these down. Weird, not equal sign. Horseshoe. And... Okay. Goodbye, the Zone Heroes. Thank you for watching. Okay, and this will... I have no understanding of what foul right I am recreating, so this should be fun. Is the other one meant for me? Is Alexandra in the pit? Alexandre. Well, this is the room from the prologue. This is no good. This is what you asked me to search for, is it not, Alexandre? Am I right? The last door. Za Illithal. The last door. We can cross together. What should I do? I'm waiting for you. Here in the mist. It's nearby. I can hear it. What is nearby? What do you hear? I hear the beating of its wings. It knows we are afraid. I'm ready. Sit down. Once we saw through the door, now we walk through. Do you think that we will find any clue here about Devet's whereabouts? The police must have taken almost everything, but we have no other leads to pursue. Hopefully they have overlooked something. What about this room? It's the mansion from episode one. There's a sealed letter between this table and the wall. It looks like Air Beechworth never sent it. I think it is best that you read it. Dearest Alexandre, please, you must reflect on this. We do not we do not yet know what we are dealing with. If you were to open the door, it may stay that way. An open way for whatever lives on the other side. Videte Neki Scout. <laughs> okay. So we're through the veil. What will we find in the fog? What will we find beyond it? <laughs> okay, season two.
Let's listen to a little bit of this music before we check out the extras. Skin is all scorch. Cause of death is probably shock caused by the sudden burns. A horrible way of passing. What could lead a man of God to commit such an act? So this is Father Ernest. All that remains is to file the medical report so he can receive the proper treatment a fine gentleman deserves. Cut this bad boy open. All right, the stomach looks fine. From the outside. Ugh, that sound. What is this? There's something strange in here. It looks like a piece of paper. Uh, let's pull this out. Okay, there's a note. Crumple note with four names, one of them crossed out. I think I should inform the inspector immediately. So, Ernest Glynn, Jeremiah DeVette, Alexandra D., and Hugo. Yeah. Yes, these are short little scenes. Francis Baldwin. He's the uh, the caretaker, the one who uh, <laughs> who beamed me with a hammer. After being certified of your guilt by a peer jury, we find you guilty of the wicked and violent murders of fourteen innocent and sick people. Because of this sentence, I I am hereby authorized to execute you at this very moment by hanging to death in the sight of God. Would you like to make a final statement before we proceed? <laughs> Why will you say that I am mad? You should have seen how mercifully I proceeded. With what love? I saved them. I released them. Now they are in a better place. Do you still believe I am mad? Thunk. Wanderer in the fog. She is the only survivor. What happened to the others? They are all dead. I would like to talk to her. She's spoken only nonsense since she woke up. Is this one of the nuns, maybe? Good afternoon. My name is Johann Kaufman. I'm a doctor. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Please be careful with what you ask, with what you ask. Miss Parnell's state is delicate. I am perfectly fine and able to talk, sister. Thanks for your consideration. Now, Doctor, I understand you want me to repeat my story? I would be thankful to hear it indeed. 
I'll stay outside if you need me. I am a sane woman, Doctor, in complete control of my mind and reason. You do not dare to question it. I certainly wouldn't. Then I will commence. I woke up in the dark. The room was small, so narrow that I could touch the wooden walls just by raising my elbows. Could you recognize the place? I couldn't tell at first. For a moment, a most dreadful thought crossed my mind. What if I had been buried alive? When I got out, I found myself in my parents' house. I hadn't been there since... since they sent me to school. Did you see anyone there? Your parents or maybe someone you did know? No, they were not in the house, nor was any servant I had known for the years of my childhood. I was alone. I could feel the humid air on my skin and could smell the scent of the long time abandoned. I walked the rooms unsettled by the silence. The place had the bleak feel of a ruin. Then I saw someone on the opposite end of the corridor. An old woman stared at me. An old woman? Who was she? How should I know? I hadn't seen her before. I followed her out through the back alley and into the streets. I got lost in the burg of Aberdeen. The streets were deserted, and a thick fog covered everything. I thought I had seen the old woman through the fog once or twice, but they could have just been shadows. So the city was empty? No, not completely. I met some people. Vagabonds. One of them was a priest. I remember a novelist and a boy, too. The priest, where did you meet him? I met him in a stable. Good lord, he said, mass there, among the beasts. Can you imagine the profanity? Tell me more about the novelist. The woman, the woman had never written a word. She created only in her mind, you know. She could tell the stories sentence by sentence with perfect precision, and I can even hear a piece of her last work. Do you remember anything about the novelist's work? Yes. The piece she told me was something like, The shadow of the past soon melted within the land that loves silence. Through the fog they walked, found themselves lost. Hoping for a sign from their gods, they set camp on the beach, where thirty birds awaited to meet their crowd. So the boy, what about him? I came across an abandoned carriage. The horse was long dead, its bones still harnessed to the cart. There was a bull <laughs> there was a young man petting the carcass of the animal. Could you talk to this young man? He was deaf, but I think he could read my lips. When he spoke, he did with a clear accent. He said he could only listen to the songs of the departed. What happened then? As I walked, the fog got denser. I could barely see anything around. I finally met the old woman. She didn't say a thing, but gave me a cardboard card, and then she left. She gave you a playing card? It was one of those used to tell fortune. There was a drawing on it of a veiled person holding a lamp. Then the mist seemed to clear and I could finally see. What do you mean? The fog opened to a clear, giant space. Not in the city, it was a barren land, bathed by a dark sea. And something else. It was there. It looked at me. The burning dark inside, the shaking, the scream, that vision I cannot understand. What is it, Doctor? Have I finally lost my strength of mind? I believe you. I am sure that what you lived is real. But I am afraid that I currently lack any proof that can confirm your account. I am I'm sorry. I should leave. I thank you for your time. Wait, Doctor, I have something else to say. When I first woke up here, there was something beside me. Would this be enough proof? 
It looks like a tarot card. Oh, it's the one from her dream. So yeah, she had a similar experience after being attacked by Baldwin and buried alive. Okay, so Beechworth's wake. Beechworth was the guy that we found dead in chapter one. I believe he was one of the four witnesses, but that last note calls that into question. He does not look dead, but just asleep. I barely knew him, busy as he was traveling the world. What would be of a man with no aspiration for the other side to inspire or lead him? I knew it would come to this. Your father was a terrible mess of a man. I'm only grateful that he brought you to our home. Soon enough, not long after you were born, I hold no doubt that you will learn from his bad example and grow up to be a righteous gentleman. What could there be greater than the efforts of mortals to rise from their miserable condition? We'll speak later, young man. We're busy. This is so sad. He was most dearest to me. You know, your father was a complicated man. He had a strong character and was stubborn as a mule. When he had taken a determination, he believed he had a mission in this world, though I'm not sure he knew exactly what it was. That which avoids description, the unknown, provides men with a reason to exist. This is a most sorrowful day. Mr. Beechworth was a great man, lad. This is an obscure domain. It's secrets taken by man from the silence of nature and death. You're the young Beechworth, is that right? Your father left you everything, Anthony. The house, his accounts, and all his belongings for you to receive when you come of age. It was very specific in his testament, though, that, you'd re that you should receive this prompt. Yeah. He was very specific in his testament, though, that you should receive this promptly. His personal book log. These are the memoirs of my life, my research, and knowledge of the other side. Use them wisely, son. Uh-oh. <laughs> cool well that is the last door season one um i don't know that i want to start season two just yet i want to give this a little bit of time to breathe maybe come back to it in a little bit do something else in between this is neat i like this quite a bit uh so thank you very much for watching um, if you want to uh, see more of what I do and what we do here on this channel uh, and you're watching on Twitch, consider following, uh, consider subscribing. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. You know all the stuff to do, the memes and such, the liking and whatnot. Otherwise, though, I will be back tomorrow, probably with something short that I can do in one sesh. Um, if I don't see you, have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy this uh, this summer it's very nice out today. Was anyway. I'm sure it's nice out now. I hope it is similarly nice where you are at. Take care. And, no, well, take care. I already said the last thing. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>